Hey, hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure and use Kubernetes Open Policy Agent that is generally called as a OPA gatekeeper at Amazon EKS cluster. As you see in this screen, this screen will depict my demo here. I'm going to walk you through the, um, the complete demo into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show you at, you know, at architecture diagram level explanation, like saying, you know, how does this OPA works at Amazon EKS cluster? which is an AWS managed Kubernetes cluster, right? And then in the second part, I'm going to show you like, you know, the steps that you need to perform to enable this OPA at your EKS cluster and use the capability of OPA for your, you know, governance or, you know, uh, the policy management at Amazon EKS, right? All right, so uh, before I start with the first part of a demo, a kind request, please do subscribe my channel. That would really encourage me a lot with that note. Let's get started here. Okay, so for example, say you have an Amazon EKS cluster, right? And once the cluster is up and running fine, what you do is, you know, you are gonna use your admin, that is a say developer, Kubernetes developer will be configuring or hosting open policy agent on this EKS cluster, okay? Say, you know, this is the OPA configurations, which is generally, you know, generally the gatekeeper maintains. So basically this OPA is kind of a, you know, um, a, a kind of a image or the, uh, application which has been developed by gatekeeper okay all right so as the name says gatekeeper you know this the responsibility of this agent or the gatekeeper is you know it actually regulates the you know the task that you can do on the kubernetes uh, you know the kubernetes cluster right so basically it could be creating the pods deleting the pods or updating the you know the application configuration or updating the pods and all right so basically all these tasks will be regulated by the you know open policy agent okay so this agent is very intelligent way of you know maintaining the governance of your enterprise or you know policies of your enterprise at amazon eks hosting level right or our kubernetes hosting level so that's what the you know the, the capability will be given by the you know open um, policy agent here right so here so as this admin has configured the you know uh, opa on this amazon eks basically the structure of the opa something looks like this okay i have explained you this is something like you know compliance management solution at kubernetes level okay or our governance management solution at your eks level which is very flexible very easy to use right and it, it also you know it also follows the um right this is a uh, this is a very volatile you know this is very uh, flexible volatile solution of managing the governance on your eks and with you know with this approach you can follow the you know the policy development like you know you can use the even you can use the cicd approach to manage your policies on your kubernetes cluster okay that is a, that is a flexibility that you know this opa provides here so basically the the working okay so basically the functionality of working will be explained in a just a, you know after this one but at the quick diagram level so whenever the request or event happens on the services of your you know say on the services of your kubernetes basically this each request or each task uh, that that is getting invoked on the amazon eks gets evaluated by the opa right so you know when the opa you know basically what it happens is here is you know the, the actually there will be a computation will be happening here so what is that you know uh, so opa will be getting the input which is a, a query json value for example say or it could be a data right so it, it's a data a request is a data basically so with using this data what this opa does is you know it will compare that data uh, that request against the you know already configured policy rego so there is a there is a configuration or there is a constraint will be you know configured uh, on this opa agent so basically this agent will compare the request against the policies and based and, and and also it will also check the data basically right so it, it does compares the three things here one is uh, the query or the request right and the it also checks the policies or the constraints of the you know opa and it also compares with the data that is a that is actually the uh, your application data right and finally by comparing all the three constraints you know it comes to a conclusion or a decision okay and based on that decision so the decisions will be given back to the you know as a response of that request okay that's what it happens every request will be you know evaluated through the opa where opa will be consuming the policy and the data out you know by using these three constraints it actually gives a decision right any kind of json values okay basically you know the response will be given like uh, in terms of uh, you know it could be deny or allowed 
or it could be warning something like that so all these you know all these kind of uh, response will be given by the opa right so this is how basically uh, the architecture of this opa is uh, which is given from the gatekeeper right so i know this is how uh, this is how this uh, open policy agent works now let me go to the real time okay how does it it actually you know uh, gives the response and you know, how does the the response workflow look like at this amazon eks right for example say uh, you know at now a developer who is actually a, a eks application developer say so he is you know he is actually he is actually you know um, requesting something on the amazon eks say he is trying to deploy a pod on the amazon eks that is a request right so basically when it request you know the request penetrates across the you know across the same flow which i explained like you know it just first hits the service it could be anything right and then once it hits the service opa will identify you know there is a some request and that request will be evaluated against the policy or the constraint of the opa and then it will also gets compared with the data and then finally it comes with the collective uh, decision and that is generally called as a response so the response will be you know sent back to the particular developer saying like you know whether it is allowed uh, or deny option or any kind of warning or or you say you are are you doing something something else apart from this one okay so all these you know this is how and so these are the flow actually you know this is how the actually opa you know sits on your amazon eks cluster and gives you a a governance capability or policy management capability on the amazon eks okay so this is how you know it works now i will take you back to the um, i will take you back to the my eks cluster which is uh, i have just now created so i created an eks cluster so this is the second part so let me tell you so this is the second part that i am going to show you now so basically what i am going to show you is you know how you can set up this infrastructure on your amazon eks cluster and, Im and immediately you know evaluate how does the opa works okay i have already done that in my uh, powershell uh, you know this is in my this powershell terminal i'm going to walk you through those steps what did i do how did it responds everything okay from the scratch to end right so first one i created an eks cluster with the version like 1.23 and the and the eks version is you know my eks so this is my eks cluster version is 1.23 this is a eks provider okay this is my cluster which is up and running fine okay so how did i create this eks cluster is i'm going to walk you through this so basically i have already you know i have already uh, uh, done the required steps in this powershell terminal with using you know aws cli ekctl right uh, and also the kubectl and helm as well right so i use these many terminals to achieve the scenario or these many you know uh, command line utilities to reach this scenario okay so how did i do that that's the something that i know i'm going to walk you through now so first one i opened the you know powershell with using administrative privilege that you see here then we configured you know i i set the context of my aws account with using aws cli command that is aws configure where where they you know i have used the previously given access key and the secret and then i changed my default region to eu west one because my eks cluster is in eu west one right um yeah so then then you know i have evaluated whether the aws sts get calor identity is the one that we want so this is my uh, user id and then i use the ekctl uh, command to create my eks cluster that is ekctl create cluster hyphen hyphen name of my cluster that is my eks and the reason that is eu west one right so this this has this has taken nearby 15 minutes if i can drag down and it has created me an eks cluster i will just go above so, so this is the message you know once you see that you know my eks cluster with the name my eks in eu west region is ready so once you see this one basically you know your cluster is up and running fine and you can start using the you know your kubernetes api server with using kubectl commands or kubectl utility and that's what i did so i queried the api server to check what is the status of my nodes of my eks cluster okay and that's what this is the reason you know it, it showed me right so i did run it uh, twice just to confirm it don't get confused okay then what i did is i will tell you so here is a, a very good experience that i got here so basically i was trying to you know i was trying to uh, uh, configure the gatekeeper software on my eks with using you know open uh, open source gatekeeper.yaml file but it was not working so if i see here command so basically i try to apply so basically you know as as i explained here you have the eks cluster now you want to deploy a gatekeeper software on that one or or gatekeeper application on that you know on your amazon eks cluster right that's the first step okay so once you have that parts or parts of the gatekeeper are running then only you can use you know you can use that as a open 
policy agent okay so you can use it for open easy open um open agent policies okay so open uh, policy agent yeah so basically if you see here so uh, we we try to run the command that is cube uh, tutorial apply and this is the path i have used here that is uh, you know the gatekeeper installation path which actually you know denied why 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 denied because this is the you know this is the actually the um, the path which aws given me but it actually not working for some reason if i can copy this one here right and it is going nowhere okay so that's the reason you know i i tried multiple times but it was failing okay this is a good learning basically this is this path is is not working as of now that's the reason i'm getting these responses then what did i do is you know i also got a confusion whether my cube serial connection got lost but then again what i did is i run a command cube serial get nodes i still got a response from the api server right which means that you know the connection is intact i did try for you know a couple of times with you i, I did run the same command couple of times uh, I did modify uh, some of the files, but actually I didn't get any response till here, right? So basically till here, you know, it's just a trial and error. Okay, so these are the trial and error. You can just ignore it off. Now we'll take you down basically and let's see. Okay, so then what I did is I'm going to uh, uh, make this up to this level. Then this is where the actual configuration starts now. So till now we have done with the Kubernetes cluster up and running fine. Then I will now get started with the uh, I will now get started with the uh, the Helm the commands that I used here. Okay, so I'll just uh, just uh, spell it up. So this is what actually the configuration is. So I have searched the internet. I found that you know the gatekeeper software can be installed with using the Helm commands as well on your EKS cluster. That's the reason what I did is I added a Helm chart to my local repository of Helm. That is Helm repo add gatekeeper, then HTTPS open policy agent dot github dot io so this is the you know repository i have added that is a i have added a gatekeeper charts in my local repository and then i got a response saying like you know the gatekeeper has been added into the repository right and then i ran a next command which is actually install the gatekeeper uh, you know the parts or gatekeeper application on my eks cluster that is helm install gatekeeper for slash gatekeeper and this is the name uh, template is you know uh, gatekeeper again and the namespace is you know i'm just creating a new namespace called gatekeeper and then pumping you know i just piping a a, a a parameter called create namespace if it is not exist okay finally you know it has it has gone through a couple of warning but it has successfully you know installed the gatekeeper application on my eks cluster okay so this is the basically story of the first step that is uh, that is you know how you can make your eks cluster or any kind of kubernetes cluster installed with the gatekeeper application okay and then what i did is since it creates a new namespace i just checked you know whether do you have a namespace with the name called gatekeeper system that is kubectl get ns okay which is actually least the namespaces that is gatekeeper hyphen system has been retrieved so in the sense i have the gatekeeper system you know uh, namespace has been created then i went to the next command that is uh, kubectl get pod of of namespace gatekeeper okay and here you go so these are the applications which are running for gatekeeper okay if you see this one so there should be four parts should be up and running fine that is gatekeeper audit gatekeeper control manager there are the you know three control managers and one audit part has to be running on your eks cluster which confirms that you know you have successfully set the gatekeeper application on your kubernetes cluster right then we will go next step so in the next step what we are doing is you know we are configuring the um, now we are just checking the logs actually so once you configured the uh, you know the 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 gatekeeper uh, uh, software on your eks cluster or kubernetes cluster you're going to check the logs of the you know uh, of the namespaces actually right so basically you know you see here i'm getting the i'm just checking the logs of my audit controller that is audit gatekeeper audit pod get logs right control pane right audit controller and the namespace is from the kubernetes right uh, uh, kubernetes system and this is what the logs i have got as a response of that i will go next one similarly i did it for the control manager so earlier we did for the audit controller now the control manager i see that you know logs looks to be fine okay so the logs gives you message about your status of your application basically right it was a bit lengthy uh, message even though so we will just uh, uh, show you here right so you see this one so this much message i have retrieved from the uh, controller manager yeah so this is the control manager so just scroll it up so right so these are the responses yeah all right so basically this response you know this this message if you see read this one 
it will tell you, you know whether the your application is in good state or not or you know, your your gatekeeper application is in good shape or not once you are done that then next comes the actual you know uh, so basically what till you now what you did is you have set the eks cluster and you have deployed the uh, you know the um, gatekeeper agent which is actually uh, opa agent okay um, and after that you know with uh, to that agent you need to configure it so it's just like you know gatekeeper is like a template where you can insert your constraint one after the other as a policies and that policy will act or that policy will try to behave as you define the constraint okay so that is what the you know that is what actually uh, two things okay first one uh, first one you know you need to define the template first and to that template you know you will be inserting the constraint okay that is what how does it works so for that case you know i have run the next command that is you know creating a constraint template.yaml file i will just show you <clears throat> the response which i got after you know applying that is you know um, so i have created a constraint of type you know uh, the gatekeeper sh uh, kubernetes uh, privileged privileged container is been created i will just show you how does this constraint template look like right if i open this one this is my constraint template this is just like a you know a, a kubernetes specification file basically it just look that and it is a, a, an extension with dot yaml file so here we are using the api versions that is a template dot gatekeeper dot sh v1 beta 1 and the kind is you know constraint template okay the kind here itself is a constraint template since it is it is you know it is a part of uh, you know the opa agent so these are the kinds also been introduced by the kubernetes to achieve the required enterprise grade uh, you know the uh, governance and compliance layer at your aks cluster right our kubernetes cluster and the metadata we are just giving the same name right in the specification credentials specification name so we are giving this credentials name and in the targets you know the target here is you know admission uh, it's admission then kubernetes gatekeeper.sh file so these are the rego so the, here is a rego basically the package is you know kubernetes uh, uh, a ps privileged one right so in this one you are also defining that you know what kind of message it has to uh, you know it has to pop up um you know for this particular constraint template so the this the template the constraint template that you are deploying is pointing to some privileged containers in the sense whenever you are deploying some privileged containers on your eks cluster it should stop okay that is what it means basically and when such things happen uh, you are telling the opa to pop up a message saying like you know privileged containers are not allowed because of this one right so that is what this violation message will be popped up here and the input containers okay so the input container uh, mapping is something being configured here like like you know say you know uh, if the constraint is that is c right so here is a, a input para input containers right and then you know then then you are checking the uh, security context privileged one okay so basically this is just a, a i can say you know uh, this is just a, a go kind of call you know this this is a go code basically yeah so here you have the input uh, review right so input review object constraint okay you are just evaluating the constraint whether it is you know whether it is meeting the constraint or not if it is meeting the constraint you know you are popping the uh, violation message this is what the constraint template does okay so basically now you have added a constraint template so to that template you need to add a constraint okay so basically um, you know basically this is what the next template does i'm going to walk you through this one as well so we have a, a yaml file dot called constraint.yaml file so it contains the constraint uh, gatekeeper.sh and we have beta 1 so here kind is you know the kubernetes uh, uh, you know ps privileged container so if you if i go back to this one this is a constraint template and this is the meta kubernetes privileged container right this is the, here the kind itself is a kubernetes privileged container okay so there's a difference between the the first deployment and the second deployment yeah so here the i uh, know the name of this uh you know the kubernetes privileged container is you know psp a privileged container right and then specification matches kind you know if the api group is equal to all and kind is equal to block part then you know then you should block it basically what has been the sense you have added a constraint saying like you know if somebody is deploying uh you know uh, the privilege if somebody is doing the privilege task on the on the on the kubernetes part or they are deploying a uh, in, in layman term if they are deploying a part with a constraint of privileged permissions then you need to stop that kind of deployment that's what this constraint and template together you know brings the man meaning yeah and then you are actually you know which is this is just like a you know, this is just like, just like a test case for us right I'm going to show you this one. So I will come back to this one uh, later. So for now, let's go back to the uh, PowerShell terminal. And that's what I'm doing here. Okay. So first one, we create a constant template here. Right? And this is the constant template response has been given. 
then i am adding a constraint which i will need so that has been also been added here and then then what i am doing is you know you are just listing the get constraint in a sense whether you have what are the constraint been added that is a psp privileged constraint and the constraint template also you are can you are checking it here that is a kubernetes privileged container basically you are just checking the name yeah and then finally you are doing a test actually so what is the test that you are doing right so i can show you that again so basically let's do it again so basically get constraint template first let's get the constraint template so if i run this command so basically what i'm doing is i'm getting the constraint template here this is the, my constraint template name and if i do a constraint name that is what is the constraint that we have added and it's just printing the name actually right okay so um and then finally it's time for now to test in the sense till now you have configured uh, you have configured the cluster you have hosted the uh, gatekeeper agent or you know gatekeeper basically to that gatekeeper you have added the constraint template right to that constraint template you have added your your constraint number one that is do not deploy part with the privileged you know uh, privilege uh, privilege access basically right now basically once you are done with that you know you are actually configured the required you know it's just like a, it's just an example of enterprise grade you know uh, governance or the policy uh, compliance that is required on your eks cluster say this is what it happens okay now i will go back to the uh, uh, this is the example file so basically this is the test case that i am doing in the sense what i am doing to what i am doing is i am trying to create a pod with the privileged uh, you know with the security context equal to privileged okay so for example say uh, api version equal to this one uh, it's a pod actually and it's a bad nginx pad right then this is a bad nginx pod okay then the name of the is image is nginx only okay and in this security context i am using privileged equal to true in the sense whether it is a whether it needs a privileged access or not and here i am marking it as a true right so if i say run this one that is kubernetes create or just deploying that file right so let me see what is the error it is getting right so if you see here there is an error from the service that is a forbidden error error when creating this in the sense where you error when creating this particular part it says that you know the admin webhook validation gatekeeper.ss denied the request ps privileged container that is this is the this is the actually uh, you know the uh, constraint okay saying that you know the privileged container is not allowed that is nginx security privileged is not allowed yeah so basically this is what this is what the response i got you know when i did a deployment with using the privileged context or security context okay so basically this is how you know this is generally you know i have uh, you know walked you through the uh, end to end step of this uh, uh, this particular demo right to summarize you know this is uh, this is an example of uh, you know the uh, governance and the compliance application that you can configure on the your kubernetes uh, you know the kubernetes cluster which like an example managed amazon eks cluster right uh, where you can take the capability of this opa and achieve the required governance and the compliance layer at your eks hosting right all right so that's all for now i have uh, successfully shown you the things need to be shown in this video finally i can request please do subscribe my channel that would really encourage me a lot so with that note thank you thanks a lot and see you in the next video